Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of AQS Quilt Stars Trunk Shows. I am so excited to be coming from Quilt City USA, that's Paducah, Kentucky, to share a wonderful trunk show with my friend, AQS teacher, AQS contestant, often AQS winner, Karen Marchetti. Karen, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm jealous of you because you're in Florida and I'm in Kentucky. We just had like eight inches of snow here. How is the weather where you are? Uh, it's hot. It's always hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could use some of that right now, <laughs> I think. Well, I'm really excited to be talking with you and I want to tell everyone at home and you as well that we are um, happy to be partnering with our wonderful sponsor today and that's Gamel. Gamel Quilting Systems um, is here to support your trunk show and to support AQS and we are so excited we couldn't be doing this without them. Later on in the episode, they're going to um, run a little commercial and we're gonna announce a giveaway. So you can win um, a wonderful prize and I'll give you a hint, it's something that everyone who's a quilter needs um, and it's valued at $349. So stay tuned, about halfway through, we're gonna tell you how to enter to win that. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. Karen, um, can you talk about the first quilt that you have up right now? Yeah, the first one, which will probably stay up the whole time because it, it's big and heavy, is Andromeda Crossing, and it's 83 inches square. And, and um, I did ice dyes with Cindy Lobeck, and I, we did all these crazy folds. So that's what the, the dyes are made from. And then I cut them up, and she said, everybody's afraid to cut them up. And I said, why? It's just fabric. Cut it up. <laughs> So that's, that's what started the pieces. And this quilt just grew and grew because it was only supposed to be 60 by 60, but there was just too much good fabric. So it just kept getting bigger. <laughs> I love that. It's so unique and beautiful and the ice dyed fabric really, really shines there. Um, something I've noticed about your quilts is that you implore, uh, em employ a variety of different techniques. And so we've got the ice dyeing and you're known as a long arm quilter. And so can you tell me what it is about trying all the different techniques? Do you just do it so that you don't get bored or are you just trying to learn new things? Like um, what compels you to try all those different things? I have attention issues. So <laughs> I get, I, I'll, I'll have an idea for a quilt. And by the time I start on it, it's like it totally changes halfway through and then changes again at the end just because there's so much that I want to try and I'm like oh I should use that on this quilt let's try this and 90% of the time it works <laughs> I love that 90% is a great percentage because when yeah. I try new things, I mean, 60% of the time it works. So you're doing great with 90%. It'll come together. <laughs> That's right. And can you explain the word um, Andromeda Crossing, the title? Um, where did that come from? Well, um, my friend, I, this quilt had no name. Well, I should say it had like 35 names because I couldn't find one that fit. And one of my friends was over and she said, oh, it looks like a, you know, a galaxy. And I went, really? So then I started researching different galaxies and Andromeda came up and I found the picture and it was all purples and browns. And I'm like, that's it. And the crossing is just because there's a big X through it. That's great. Yeah, I love that. I love that it's unique and it does look like a galaxy. I, I really enjoy that quilt and I've gotten to see it in person a couple times and I miss seeing your quilts in person, but oh, I miss <laughs> being anywhere in person. <laughs> I know. I'm so ready to get quilt shows started up again. You don't realize how important it is for your soul until you've gone a while without them. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, okay. I think I'm ready to see the next quilt. All right. I mean, my husband, this is my husband, Joe. Some people know him out there in the world. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Thanks for your help today. You're welcome. So um, I, I, the first two are just everyday quilts because nobody believes that I make everyday quilts, but I do. <laughs> they, just, they just don't get out in the world much. So this is just a real quick Christmas quilt I threw together. It just comes out at Christmas time. It's thrown on the couch. It gets well used. I like that. I'm glad you're showing us every the everyday quilts that a lot of us make at home because I know that um, one thing I've heard from people all over will say, "Oh, well, I'm a quilt artist, or I'm a I'm a, I'm a quilter, but you know, I'm a quilter, but I don't I'm not good enough to enter my quilts in a show, or it's not special enough." And we all make simple quilts sometimes. It doesn't have to be you know a, a best of show winner. So enter your quilts for sure when we come back with shows. Oh, definitely enter your quilts because there's one later in this pile. That was supposed to be an everyday quilt, and I let it out into the, the 
competition world and it did very well. So even everyday quilts are, are good enough for show. That's absolutely right. And if nobody entered, if everyone thought that they weren't good enough to enter, we wouldn't have quilt shows. So enter your work and something that you might think might just be run of the mill could be really, really special to other people. It can be. It can be. So, all right. Put that one away. No, not on that one. Some of them, the, so I like to play on the back of my quilts, and that's why he was asking if you want to see the back. Um, but that's not a special back. Some of my backs are really fun. Well, good. I'm excited to see them. This is another everyday quilt. Ooh, I love that blue. It's really striking. Yeah, well, I pulled the blue out of this fabric, and I like the blue better now. So you got it? Okay. So just another everyday quilt. Lives on the back of the couch. I think we all have our favorite quilts because when we come out to you know, watch movies and stuff, it's like grab whichever quilt you want first. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Yeah, I have several um, different blankets that I have on the back of my couch, but one of them I just kind of wash over and over and keep there. <laughs> so it's important that we have our special quilts. And you, so you got that blue out of that other fabric that you, and you liked the, you liked the pattern fabric at first, and now you like the blue better. Is that what you were saying? Well, I love this one. I start when I thought, you know, went picked out my fabrics, and then I found the blue to pull that blue out. But the blue is what jumps out at you first. So. Yeah, it does, and it and it translates beautifully over Zoom too because it's so bright and lovely. That's just an everyday one. I love it. Yep. I think everyday quilts are special because those are the quilts that we wrap ourselves up in, and those are the quilts that we have on our beds. And so, I I'm a big fan of the everyday quilts. They get the love. Mm -hmm. The competition right. ones get packed away. So this was another one that was supposed to be an everyday quilt until I quilted it. And I hope you can see that on camera. Can you bring it a little bit closer? I might be able to see better. And if not, we will. Oh, yeah. Oh, my god. It was going to be an everyday quilt. And then I did the quilting plan. And I went, oh, this has to go out in the competition world. And it did really well. It did. And I'm, I love muted colors. So it, when you see more of my house quilts, they're much more muted and dull. Whereas I do other colors in my competition pieces. I would have never guessed that about you because your competition pieces, the colors are so wild and out there. And, uh, but I'm like you, I love those gorgeous muted neutral tones. That's what I have all over my house. And the quilting on that is extraordinary. Do you, um, do you mark everything out? Like how do you plan it out when you quilt? So on these, um, all, the, all the little football shapes, I did make a stencil with just the spine shape. So that way I only had to trace the spine and it looks like it's mirror imaged, but if you go through and count all the feather petals, they don't match. But the, the, the straight spine and the mirror image, it tricks your brain into thinking it's exactly the same. Wow, that is really, really cool. And um, for those of you at home, if you can't see the quilting that well right now, um, we'll get a picture from Karen of an up close quilting so you can see it as well. So I, I think that's so lovely, thank you. And a great example of how an everyday quilt, you know, something that you're just making from a pattern or something that might not take you that long to, to piece or can be made really, really special. Oh, yeah. And that happens. You, you, like you, you put all of your heart and soul on a quilt. And in the end, you're like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. And then another quilt you'll throw together and it turns out to be your favorite. There's no rhyme or reason with it. That's right. So this quilt is the thing with feathers and everybody thinks it's really small, but it's about 70 <laughs> wide. That's, you know, it looks like a quilt. If you were just to see a photo of it, you would assume that that was a wall quilt, but it is not. <laughs> it's, big. it's pretty big. I mean, these birds, they're huge. <laughs> but on this, um, I traced my hand, the shadow of my hand, and that's how I got the, the hand reaching. And these are all painted with uh, Shiva paint sticks and appliqued and then I inked the letters on and then I just had major fun with the quilting. And this one went together in, in less than a week. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's amazing. I love the painted birds and the different techniques you used and they really stand out against the background and the, the background looks like a cloudy sky to me. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted it. I wanted the birds and the and the reaching to be the hope from the poem. That's lovely. So, so what about the poem um, made you want to make a quilt like that? Or where, how did you first encounter the poem? Well, um, this was originally for a, a challenge that was for, I think the challenge was 
flight or fly, something like that. And I, I'm going, I know it has to be birds because I love doing birds. They're just fun with the feathers and the colors. So then at the time, my son's girlfriend said, well, the thing with feathers. And I said, what thing with feathers? <laughs> He's like, the poem, Emily Dickinson's poem, the thing with feathers. <laughs> So that's how it all came together. That's perfect. Yeah. And then you've got feathers quilted into the quilt. Yes. And the feathers are actually stitched with a really pale variegated thread where everything else is just the dull gray because I wanted that to be the hope. That's lovely. I love the whole concept of that quilt. Thank you. Yeah, that's a heavy one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to rest those arms. We're all getting heavy. I told you they were going to get heavy. He didn't believe me. They do when you've been holding up quilts for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And so, Karen, do you do all your quilting on a gamble machine? Uh, every bit of it is on a gamble. Um, I have an Elevate, which is computerized, but that's only for like customer edge to edges. And all of these are totally hand guided because I can't give up that much control. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. I'm very like that. <laughs> This was my first modern quilt. And um, my friend Jody Robinson, who's a very well-known modern quilter, said, you should do a modern quilt. And I'm like, oh, that's so not me. Okay. <laughs> but I, I love a good challenge because there's that competition factor. So I made this and um, it did okay out in the competition world. And, you know, nowhere near what Jody does, but it did good. So um, then I decided to make, a, this is Glacier One. I made a glacier two and there's a glacier three plan because I said, if I'm going to do something out of my comfort zone, I'm going to do a series just to get it out of my system. <laughs> this was the first one and it's just improvisational piece. I just cut pieces, sewed them together and they landed where they landed. I love that one too. I mean, I, they're, every one of your quilts is so unique. Like if you just looked at them all together, you would never go, oh, well, that's Karen, that's Karen, that's Karen. Cause they're all so different. Um, could you hold that one a little bit closer too, so we can get a better look at the quilting in the white background? Mm -hmm. And the, the quilting is kind of like how I think it's just mishmash. There's no pattern. There's no, just wherever it lands. Oh, I just love the details that you've used and, and it, it does, it looks very, um, very cohesive, but also improvisational. And so you've done a great job of just making the eye flow from one pattern to the other and one from one place to the other. That's a yeah. really unique quilt. And yeah, like I said, I would have never guessed it's yours, but it, it's lovely. And, and we know Jody, and Jody's taught for us before and yeah, her quilts are wonderful too. So I'm glad that she encouraged you to make that series. Yeah. Well, here's part two. Here's All right. Three. Number three hasn't been born yet. It's still coming. <laughs> wow. Oh, so you've kind of done a different thing here where it looks like the piece parts makes more of the background and then you've got this quilted white fabric in the in the center. It's really nice. I, I wanted it to look like the, the cracking of the glacier, like when it calves off. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does. That's what I got from it when I first looked at it. Is it was the cracking and the distress of it. And so you're working on part three. When do you expect that to be finished? Oh, probably sometime next year. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it. I, I, you know, even if it's out of your system, these quilts work really well. You should continue to make modern quilts if you feel like that's something you'd like to do. Yeah, and maybe every now and then. They do go together, like, like modern quilts go together much quicker than like an applique quilt. I, I'm pretty amazed at that. Sure, because, you know, uh, one of the hallmarks of the modern quilts is maybe a, a s more simplistic um, background, a more simplistic style, but, you know, it doesn't mean that there's less technique involved or that there's less work involved because the work involved in these modern quilts that we've seen are just really outstanding. And you can oh, tell yeah. that all of the quilting that you've done in that is takes plenty of work and expertise. So it's just a lot of fun to look at. I have to laugh because um, I always say I'm a fluffy quilter. Like, I don't really like straight lines. <laughs> so doing these modern quilts forces me out of that comfort zone because I have to be perfectly straight every single line. There's no mistakes, no messing up because that's all there is, is just the straight lines. That's right. And your quilts, when I think about your quilts, I think about how they're very organic and they have those curves and those rounded pieces. And so I think that's part of the reason why those quilts are really striking to me is because they don't necessarily fit into that image. But I'll encourage everyone who's watching at home to try something new because just because you've done something um, for a long time doesn't mean that you can't try something else and be really successful at it. Most definitely. Most definitely. 
All so, right, what's next? This is my bridge quilt. This is um, Trent Makes Bridge in Trenton, New Jersey. And because I'm originally from Jersey, <laughs> we, we've done a lot of fishing under this bridge. <laughs> But um, this was actually just featured in the joint, the Delaware, Delaware River Joint Commission, Tol, Tollbridge Commission. It's a long title, but it was just featured in their annual report. And it was really neat because they didn't realize that it was a quilt. They thought it was a painting. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it, it looks like a painting for those out there who aren't really familiar with how complex and how beautiful a quilt can be of course they would think it was a painting but um you know you've employed all kinds of different techniques here you've got i'm, I'm thinking you've got um some applique for the bridges um can you tell us a little bit about your process on this one it's it's very unique yeah all the bridges are um one whole piece that's appliqued down well there, there's a dark green and a light green so two pieces there the gray is another piece um the brickwork are separate pieces which i painted and then, you know, applique them down and the concrete work, the same thing. I painted just plain fabric and then applique it down. Hardest part on this was I originally wanted to just do this with just thread, but the blue fabric was so deep and intense that the thread just it didn't even show. So then I had to go back with some luminaire paint and paint the neon reflections. Well, the reflections are really stunning. They look absolutely real. And I think that really makes the quilt come alive because if it were just the blue water there, it wouldn't be quite so dynamic. So I, I, I think that the paint worked great. Yeah. And they, they change the, the bridge commission changes the colors of the neon. On okay. the sign. So like at St. Patrick's day, the water looks green and Valentine's day, they do it pinkish red. So it, it, the water changes depending on what season it is or holiday. What a cool tribute. And I've um, myself hung this one before and, and seen it in person. It was part of our um, guild challenge, the ultimate guild challenge in Grand Rapids. And uh, that's something really special we do at just the Grand Rapids Quilt Show. And hopefully we'll be back there um, in 2022. But if you're part of a guild and you have a guild group challenge, you can enter that in the ultimate guild challenge. And so there at the show, we have um, each guild will submit eight quilts, and then you'll get to look at all of those eight in each group and re-award one, one guild um, the prizes. So I, I was really happy to see that one here today. I really enjoyed it when I saw it in person. Um, and so I want to thank you so much for what we've seen so far. I cannot wait to see what else you have, and I want to just take a little break here to hear a word from our sponsor, who is Gamble. Gamble's going to be giving away um, a professional bobbin winder, which is a great tool for everyone who is a quilter. I mean, it makes perfect bobbins with wonderful even stitches. And so let's hear a word from Gamble. Today, I get to show you Gamble's new professional bobbin winder. This little machine kicks out absolutely perfect bobbins every single time. It's quiet, it's simple to use, and it's built to last forever. Obviously, one of the things you need for perfect stitches is a perfect bobbin, and this machine delivers one every single time. Check out how evenly this bobbin is wound, and the thread tension on this bobbin is perfectly consistent from the first stitch to the last. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Gamel. Everyone who's watching, be sure to go to quiltweek.com slash trunk show so that you can enter for your chance to win that professional bobbin winder. Now back to Karen. I am so excited to see everything else you have to show us. So let's just hop right into it. What's next? Um, next is my quilt, Lucy, who amazingly is another, um, another Grand Rapids contestant and winner. <laughs> so lift her up just a little bit. She is incredible. She is this fitting image of Lucille Ball. And I used to watch I Love Lucy um, on Nick at Night growing up. I loved it so much. And so it's just nostalgic for me. What made you want to make that quilt? This was my challenge for famous female faces in my art group. And I was like, I'm doing Lucy. I don't care what you're all doing. I'm doing Lucy. <laughs> so I found this image and I enlarged it. And the weird thing is when you look at her from the side, her eyes kind of look to the side. So it's kind of weird, you know, when you when you walk up on, the, on an angle, but when you walk up straight up to her, it's just, I don't know, it just catches you. She pulls you right in. She absolutely does. And sometimes it's hard over Zoom to really get the essence of, of, an, of a quilt because you're looking at art across the internet. But 
I mean, the second you pulled her up, it looks like she's looking right into my soul. She's making eye contact with me. So I just, I just am really stunned. And again, just a totally different um, technique, a totally different quilt than some of the others. Can you tell us a little bit, um, you said you blew up the photo. And then after that, what was your process to create Lucy? It's seven layers of raw edge fusible because I divided the picture into seven different values. Well, I did you know, the picture with black and white, so I divided it into seven different color levels so that each purple represents one, one of those colors. And it just goes from dark to light. I got a, a bundle of cherry wood, which if you're ever doing this technique, cherry wood makes the dyed bundles that go one through eight, it's perfect. So, yeah. Oh, that's so, just lovely. And can we get a little bit of a closer look at the heart there? I see a heart, but I... I just did Lucy. I hope you can oh. see it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the quilting there is lovely and that's so cool. Yep, I love Lucy. I love the Lucy quilt. <laughs> Thank you. I love the Lucy quilt too. <laughs> if, if if I hung that up in my house, I would like I couldn't walk by it at night though, you know, like if those eyes would hit you and you'd be, think it was a person. Well, that's why whenever you do a, a, an actual figure, they say to go really small or really big, not to make it true to size because that it freaks people out. It's, oh, you know. Absolutely it would. So this is trippy, which is another one of my group challenges. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, that just jumps out. It is, I love the colors and I just love the swirls. Tell us so about I this. I hand drew this, just in, you know, a pencil sketch. And I loved it. Uh, I'm probably going to remake it. So I loved it in, in just pencil sketch. So maybe like shades of, of, of grays or black, you know, I wanna do that. But um, I had to be different because I'm so monochromatic. All my friends said, no, do it. My friends, he's the first one that said, it needs to be bright. <laughs> so then when I colored it out with markers and I showed my husband and the group, they're like, oh, you have to do it right. So that's how this happened. And that's all black bias, handmade bias tape. And I'd make so much of it, and I think I was done, and I put it on the quilt. I'm like, no, ah, I still have, I don't know, 900 yards to go. <laughs> like, oh, no, I need more bias tape. So uh, is it painted? Or, uh, is it no, it, How it's, it's, um, these are raw edge, and then I covered my edges with the bias. Wow. So I, I put all the pieces down with the overs and the unders, and it was like putting together a puzzle. Yeah, I bet it was, especially with trying to do something so complex. And you can see, and I almost tried to trace it with my mouse and then I realized that's not going to translate to anybody. But if you follow the big black swirl there in the center, it goes under the purple and then over the purple and then under and through the center. It's just, I think for me, it would have been very difficult to find out how to really make that follow itself. And you've just done a spectacular job. Thank you. Thank you. And so what's, why are you going to remake this one? If I might ask what's making, I want to see it in the monochromatic, like I did with my pencil sketch. That's right. I'll okay. Make it small though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know if I would be up to doing that whole size again. You hear what he just said? He said, I'd make it bigger. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'd be like, sure you can. <laughs> this is my monochromatic world. This is um, dance in the rain, which started as the center was originally uh, Ricky Tim's Cool Kaleidoscope. And I had sewn it together and I'm like, yeah, it's okay, but I want more. <laughs> so then I deconstructed it. I took it all apart and just went down to just the original slices and then added all kinds of applique. And then um, because it's six sided, I have two different borders. The top and bottom are one, one border and the sides are a different border. I, this, this quilt is stunning. I'm the same way. I love grays. I have to be really careful to not just have everything in my house be gray. So I have to put pops of color, but it's just so lovely. And the, and the muted colors even make it more striking because it, it reminds me of a snowflake or it, it's just dynamic and lovely. I'm, I'm really happy to see it. And I, and I'm excited to hopefully um, maybe see that one in person sometime. Yeah. And I'll share the back because the back was dyed specifically for this. Oh my gosh. You can really see the quilting. Mm -hmm. I like to have fun with the backs. So the whole thing is reflected in the back. That's so neat. Yeah. I wanted a spiral die to pull like the whole thing together. That's right. And it, it almost just looks like a totally different whole cloth quilt on the back. Yeah. 
that's one thing that we always have trouble with that shows is because the way we hang them, unfortunately, you can't see the backs. And we have people, we'll, we'll, we'll be getting a text that goes, oh, no, you know, we're, we're trying to keep a quilt from falling down because we poured some, some very sweet person has tried to look at the back. And I'm, I understand. I also want to see the back. So maybe someday we can come up with a way so that everybody can look at the backs as well, because that's really lovely. All of them, yeah, because, well, some, some are like, I just chunk the backs and other ones, I have a lot of fun on the backs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So this is another AQS alumni. <laughs> I recognize this. This is God's Eye. I used to go to summer camp all the time. And you remember those little yarn things you made with the popsicle sticks? I That's absolutely do. Reminded me of. So then I'm like, what were they called? And my mother's like, they were called God's Eye. I'm like, oh. That's the quilt then. <laughs> That's perfect. It reminds me of that. And I remember one Christmas as a kid, I made about 40 of those for everyone I knew. <gasps> Oh my gosh, the quilting is stunning. The glittery is actually couched while I candlelight, which I, I originally stitched it in gold and there was not enough contrast at all. So I went and manually couched all the coppery bronze color over top of everything and then went through and did my background fills. Wow. That quilt is stunning and the colors just really pop. And it's so interesting to me that you prefer muted colors because these quilts would not suggest that at all. Right? <laughs> this is actually um, um, an Armani silk that Deb Linkler had dyed for me. Is it harder to quilt on silk or, or what do you find? Yeah, it's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, and the couching, let me ask you really quick about the couching on that. Do you do that on the machine or how exactly does that work? Because I know a lot of people are getting into that. I do it on the machine, that. but manually. So I had an open toe foot and I, and I literally, I take a stitch and move the fabric and take a stitch and, and move the thread back and forth over top of it. So it's like a tiny little zigzag. Wow. Well, every, want. every quilt you bring out is like my new favorite, but this one, <laughs> <laughs> this one, it, it just, photos don't do it justice. And I know that Zoom probably isn't either, but looking at that quilting um, up close is just really, really yeah. nice. All right. So I, I've seen so many that I just want to hang up in my house. I can't wait to see what's next. So next, this is called Just the Two of Us. <laughs> this is all silk dubioni that, um, so there's the background is one piece. The dock is another piece that I painted. The concrete is another piece. And then each pelican is several pieces. So um, they're all painted. Each and every feather is individually painted on one big piece of dupioni. Wow. And so this is different because this is a pictorial quilt. Um, what made you want to make something like this? I, th these guys are so cute. I really like them. I took a photo. We were out fishing. And I took a photograph of these two pelicans on the dock. So I just wanted to make just like, cause I don't know, fishing is a big part of our lives. And I, a lot of times I get bored because of my attention problems. So I'll go follow the pelicans or go wander <laughs> off. So it was really cool because they were just sitting there on the dock. And when I walked up, the one stood up like, oh no, we have to leave. Oh you know? my gosh, yeah, we have to get out of here. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to make a picture of them. That's a great memory quilt for being out and fishing. And I'm just like you, I'll get distracted and follow the wildlife. So. Yeah. And the, the attention to detail on those little feathers, I can't imagine how long that took you to, to put together. Well, I get kind of OCD. So like, I'll just start painting. And the next thing I know, he's like, are we having dinner? And I'm like, mm -hmm. yep, I'm right on that. So you're like, what day is it? <laughs> I understand. So this was another challenge. This is called Stella Luminosa. And the challenge was we had to use at least one lame. And lame is not your friend at all. <laughs> so I used two colors, the pink and the turquoise, because I found that silk, that striped green and pink is actually a silk and it had the turquoise and the pink in it. So I used that as my, my theme and I just added all the lame in. So then after I had it pieced, there just wasn't enough. So then I quilted the border. Wow. I, I, so I feel like I'm being a bad interviewer because I keep saying the same things, but the colors here are again, so striking. The pink is the very first thing I noticed. And I feel like when I would be looking at that 
fabric and looking at the lame, you would never think, okay, I'm going to put this in a quilt because it's just, it's very bright. It's very hard to work with, I imagine. Um, and yet it comes together so nicely and it does. It reminds me of, of a star, Stella Luminosa. Um, and, and the quilting on the outside, what kind of thread did you use to, to make that beautiful pink color? This is, it's a thicker thread. I don't, maybe it might've been almost 12 weight. I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I just went back and forth, back and forth like in a bean stitch kind of thing. So it was really bright. And I actually couched some of it on my domestic around all the pieces. That's really nice. And so you work on the domestic machine too sometimes then? Sometimes if, if like, especially if it's a piece this size, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. It's, you get a much thicker stitch quicker than on the long arm. That makes sense. Yeah. So this is true colors. And um, the center is a Marsha McCloskey Mexican pinwheel star, which I should have known because the book is called um, Really Hard Stars That You Can't Make or something, something like that. That's not the exact title, but it's true. Because <laughs> I did this centerpiece three times. I couldn't get it to fit. So I said, I'm good at applique. So the very center is applique because I could not make it work. And then I just added some simple bars in the same colors, a couple more stars and a bunch of little circles, and the quilting became the star on this one. But this has a horror story. And you can you can put your arms down a little, hundreds long story. <laughs> I wanted everything to be perfectly mirror imaged, which also is not me. I like, I like mistakes. I put mistakes in all my quilts. But I wanted all the feathers to be perfect. So I this only quilt ever that I marked every feather on here. And um, I used a new Timmy pen, which was a water soluble white. And it looked great. It came off. It looks great. And then I took a picture with a flash and you could see every line. The pen had some sort of mica in it. Oh no. So um, the quilt was then renamed True Colors, also known as White Lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. In two weeks, I covered all of the black in Shiva paint sticks with a black pet, you know, a black. I painted the whole quilt black. And I swear people that know the story just want to see this in person so they can take a picture with flash because you can still see some of the lines even through the paint. Bless your heart. I think there would have been a lot of swearing on my end, a lot of pulling your hair out. It was, it was doing a show. So it's like, it has to go out the door because there's little, oh. you know, there's rules with shows. If, if you don't show up, you don't get to compete for the next two years. And oh my so God. it was going out the door. It was <laughs> going, no matter what. Can we get a closer look at this one too so we can see the quilting? Sure. It totally comes to life because the black um, over Zoom hides it a little bit, but when you bring it up close, it's just so dynamic. And I love the sparkles that you've got in there too. Oh yeah, the little crystals. I put crystals on everything. I love so you it. Want to the back of this because it's bright orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, totally different. Yeah. That had some surprise, and that probably orange is not the best color on camera either. Yeah, I like to have fun with them. Yeah, I think that's fun because you can do kind of whatever you want on the back. It doesn't necessarily have to go, but you can make it thematic in however you, way you like. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, it's fun when you surprise the judges because when they flip it over, they're like, oh, cool. And <laughs> they right. add that to the critique. So it's fun to see that somebody noticed your right back or something. Yeah, for sure. All right, this All is right. the last big one. He's going to be happy. I know. <laughs> And the last heavier one. Yes. So this is one of my very favorites. This is Wanderlust. And it has been in tons of advertising. And this one has to get remade too, because my original plan, this was all woven through the pieces and the center was woven and I couldn't get it to work. So I said, We're just making it applique again. <laughs> hey, you got to do it works. Yeah, gotta, you got to make it work. So there's tons of crystals on this one manually couched as well. There's all gold thread around the quilting elements because I love quilting feathers and this one doesn't have a single feather on it. And I laugh because they kind of look like deer antlers because my husband was out hunting. He goes hunting, he would go up north hunting for a month or so at a time and I was missing him. So I added all these little deer antlers in there. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. And so you could always remember the time when you made it. I, yeah. I love that quilt. Bright yellow. Oh, bright yellow. And the quilting, again, comes through so well. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, that one is just so royal looking like it belongs to hang up in a castle or something i love the gold and it's so nice and so uh, re- remind me again how it was different from your original you wanted to do more weaving through and everything so you're going to try that again i yeah i'm, I'm going to make it probably smaller again i wanted all these colors to to weave through this center well, the way it turned out is really, really nice. And I love the applique on there. And that's a reminder to everybody else too, if you're doing something and if it's, even if it's not going exactly as planned, you know, you can do what makes it work and it has come out so lovely. Yes. And that's, a, that's how the name came to be. Cause everybody's like, how did it get Wanderlust? I said, cause the entire quote, cool, I kept saying, I wonder if this will work. I wonder <laughs> if this will work. So you really are saying Wanderlust. I love that. <laughs> Well, that's so nice. And I'm just enjoying this. I'm so enjoying talking to you and seeing all these quilts. And, you know, in the past, when I see a quilt, one of your quilts at the show, it's always like, oh, let's look at the new one Karen made. And now seeing them all together, one after the other, it's just such a thrill. Well, it was even fun because I keep them all, they're all packed in tubs, airtight. We live in a hurricane state. So you have to know what can be watertight, what, what has to stay watertight. So they're usually sealed up in tubs once they're done competing. So when I was pulling them all out, I'm like, oh, look at you. (laughs) That's right, I haven't seen this one in a while. This was another one of my challenges for the group. This is called the choice and it was a door challenge. So um, I'm one of those people that will try anything. You can't tell me it's wrong. So both doors are white fabric and um, this one I just, I used like a paint wash. I made, I mean, paint real thin with water and painted it on. But this one, I wanted it to look different because this is the dream store, not the reality door. So I even did like tea dyes. I got tons of tea bags, soaked them, put them down so I could get the darker areas. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. How cool. Yeah, I would have never guessed that they were white fabrics to start out with. Yeah, the whole thing is white fabric. And I love that concept. Oh, the quilting again is lovely. Oh, the pebbles are really neat. They're on on the um, bricks. It makes it look realistic. And the wood grain. Yeah, and then there's little little dreams peeking out in the in the glitter fabric in the glitter threads. Oh yeah, I see those. It's whimsical and beautiful. All right, so um, what's next? I I <laughs> I just feel like I'm so stunned by all the different colors and this eye candy that I'm getting fed. So this is thought process. Oh wow. And. Oh, so much went wrong with this quilt. <laughs> um, I purchased a painted a, a painted fat quarter is what it was. Somebody, um, Patui Noor, she used to sell lots of things. And then I curve pieced it to black sateen. And then um, I'm a impulsive quilter. So I had no black batting. And I have to remember this is sateen. So I went ahead and quilted it anyway. And all you could see were the holes and the white batting coming through. Oh no. So I painted it. Well, then it looked dingy. <laughs> so then it gets better. <laughs> then I spritzed it with bleach. That's where the little red dots come from. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's different dingy now. <laughs> and then I soaked it in some, um, I must said ammonia, vinegar to stop the bleaching action. But then, um, for some reason, something was still wrong with the back. Oh, the bleach came through, maybe? So then I had to spray paint with upholstery the back. This used to be a bright turquoise. So I used upholstery spray paint. Oh my gosh. Through to the front. <laughs> so I had to add more highlights. And then you couldn't see any of my feathers. So I painted those with a glistening, like a glitter, so soft paint. But the best part of this is it did win me um, the NAJC Award of Merit. And I'm like, oh, good, because it was all that work. Hopefully it was worth something. <laughs> oh, wow. It looks so cool up close and just the different swirls and the different colors. And that's hilarious to me because, you know, when you say, when you list your techniques as you have to do when you enter a quilt, it's like applique or thread painting. And so you had to be like upholstery spray paint. I spritzed it with <laughs> bleach. <laughs> But I would have never guessed the bleach is it just makes it look like a really dynamic background there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because I was, you know, I text my friend. I'm like, I'm going to try this. And I'm like, stop. And I'm like, 
no, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, I think a lot of us would be too afraid to do that, but it turned out really well. And, and I want to comment on, it's called thought process. And oh, so you've it. got everything going on in the box and then it all spills out there onto the, to the, into the open. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's pretty much how I think. That's what it looks like in my brain. So. <laughs> and how funny that thought process is the one that you had to go, okay, and now we're going to retry it this way. And now we're going to retry it this way. And I think that's really apt to a lot of our thought processes. Yeah. So this is bend. And it says, in a strong wind, bend a little, and your leaves will stay with you. Um, my creative writing teacher wrote this in my yearbook. And I've just always loved that quote. So I made a little droopy tree with some leaves. That's such a good, not only is that a really beautiful quilt, that's just a really good kind of mantra for us to keep in mind, especially during this wild time is just to be as flexible as we can. And sometimes things have to be a little weird, but it, it works out and that's just really nice. It almost looks like um, we, you, you can see the wind. You've quilted the wind into it. Yes, that's what I call wind, that background. Mm-hmm. Well, that comes through absolutely, and it works so nicely with the theme. I can see the growing pile of quilts back there <laughs> and yeah. all the fun ones you've gotten to look at. From here to there. It's perfect. So this is down the rabbit hole. Oh, my gosh. It's one piece of white fabric. Um, I, I drew a, zen, a, a doodle or a zen tangle, whatever you want to call them. I drew one on, on a little post-it note. So I enlarged it, and this is all inked. This is over 60 hours of an ink pen drawing on the fabric. And then, oh then I quilted it in, in white thread and black thread. <laughs> wow, and it looks so clean. It doesn't look like you, you've sat there with a pen because I would imagine that that wouldn't look as solid as it looks, but it just looks well, so it, nice. Yeah, it's the pen I used, which was a, a Pentel fabric gel pen, and they don't make them anymore. It's just existing stock. So every time I see a dozen for sale for way more than they should be, I buy them. Yeah. You, you buy them up. I don't blame you. And the quilting that you did in there, um, did you kind of plan that out or did you just sort of go with how it, how it worked with the sort of Zentangle style? I, I worked it from the Zentangle style, but then I, like I would have to remember because like the loop starts here and curls back into the center. So whatever I filled over here, I had to go ahead and finish that whole thing before I forgot. Oh, that's right. So, so you were actually paying attention to the continuity. I feel like if it were me, I'd be like, well, we're doing something else in this section. <laughs> but it makes it cohesive and really nice. I, so I, Karen, I think the thing that I'm taking away most from this is that you must never get bored because all of your techniques are different. All of your quilts are different and unique. Yeah, I, I just get a thought and that's usually my next quilt. So it's whatever, whatever I'm thinking about, or if a friend says, hey, I tried this, I have to somehow incorporate that in and then try it too. And if you're going to try something, you might as well make something from it. That's right. Yeah. And it kind of encourages me and hopefully everyone else to just kind of try something new. And even if it doesn't turn out quite as nicely as Karen's did, you could still try a new technique or, or just a new project and it keeps us from getting so bored and stuck in what we always do. And well, I share most of my mistakes so that I figure why not like I made the mistake I'm not going to hide it and if I can benefit somebody else to get through a, a big problem like that or persevere through it might as well that's but right I, and I know I your care. students and I know everyone appreciates that because when we share our mistakes it makes everything else a lot less scary for other people <laughs> It's only fabric. I know where they sell more. There you go it's only fabric I know where they sell more straight from Karen's mouth <laughs> So this is a, a, a big bed quilt. I made this for my son. It's huge. Wow. Yeah, it the is. The is pretty awesome on it. So I hope you can see it. it this has been well laundered, so it may not be as um, crisp and clean as it once was. Yeah, I can see the quilting. It's really beautiful. And because when you first look at it, I mean, it just seems like a really lovely kind of simple quilt. And then when you bring that forward, the quilting just really makes it special. So does your son, was those, are those the colors that he enjoys or, or what made you go, go with that? You can tell he's definitely a quilter's child. <laughs> he's an adult now, but <laughs> because um, I made him an onion quilt, you know, the blue, the Spanish onion quilts. Mm -hmm. I can't. Well, I made him one of those and he's like, I don't like it. I want a different <laughs> one. 
<laughs> and you're like, okay. <laughs> so he, he really likes that turquoisey blue color. So I said, okay, this is your quilt. If you don't like it, I'm done. You're not Tough. doing another. <laughs> That's right. Yep. So um, I have two little more pieces. And these are just um, little art quilts that I've done. This is my mermaid. You want to take it up there? And she's curved pieced and appliqued and painted and crystals. <laughs> oh, wow. I love the shell and the crystals and the, the swirls and the water. I mean, the way you've complemented the actual design and the theme with the quilting is so nice here. Yeah. Well, that's why I said, I'm like, if, if, there, if there are mermaids down there, I think they have really long flowing hair. I think they sit on seashells. You know, it's just have fun. Yeah, with that's it. right. And I, once again, crystals. I love the crystals. I, I love anything where light reflects. So crystals are just make my day. And this is a quilt I made called Hope Grows. And this is actually from a photo, a, a famous photographer. Oh, I can't think of his name. Oh, it, he's European. So he took this photo of a little, little daisy weed growing in the street. And in the photo, there's a street car. There's all people walking down the street. And I emailed him and I said, can I, can I make this into a quilt? And he said, well, what do your quilts look like? So of course I sent all my pictures of my quilts to him first. And he said, sure. I said, but I'm only using this little piece of your photo. <laughs> so um, he just wanted to see it after it was done. And that's how most things with copyright, you have to get permission. Like you have to email these people to use their photos. You can't just say, I'm gonna make a quote of this photo. So. I just wanted to show that that was what I got from it, that that little flower growing in the middle of the street. I love that one. And that's a perfect place to end because a lot of us are looking for a place to find hope right now. And it's a really good reflection of that. And again, just such a unique quilt. And, and I never get bored of looking at your stuff. It's, I'm just so excited and so happy to talk with you. And I want to thank you for this wonderful trunk show. It's been so nice, not only to see your quilts, but to catch up with you. And I want to thank this wonderful strong man over here who's held up all these quilts. You've done a wonderful job. I, all of these things are family affairs. And that's one thing I love about sharing with our quilters over Zoom. Um, Gamel, uh, we want to thank our sponsor Gamel again, who has um, so graciously take, made this trunk show possible. Don't forget to go to quiltweek.com slash trunk show to enter for that professional bobbin winder valued at $349. Karen, you said that you were hoping to get one of those pretty soon yourself. Yeah, I have to get one. Um, I, I actually tested it out last time I was at Gamble. I'm like, oh, I want one. Okay. <laughs> That's right. So, and you you need one at home too. So be sure to go enter that. Uh, just thanks again, Karen. It's been so much fun. I, I just really appreciate talking with you. And it's just been so nice looking at your quilts. Oh, thank you, Liz. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, you enjoy the rest of your day and everybody out there watching. I hope that this has brought you a little bit of quilty inspiration, made you want to go out and try something new. Again, just like Karen, try all the different techniques. You're going to find oh. something you love and it's time to just try it. Don't be afraid. Thanks so much. It's been wonderful. And we'll see you hopefully pretty soon um, at a quilt show in person.